Hi, this is Don. I want to show you how to solve this problem from Chapter 2 using uh, good old basic Excel. And the problem uh, is about a histogram, you can see from looking at the question. And it says we work at a bank. We're asked to recommend the amount of cash to put in an ATM each day. You don't want to put in too much or too little. Complete parts A through C. Um, Let's get our data first of all. I'm going to click on the icon. We get this table and I'm going to click on that icon again and I'm going to open that in Excel. Down here at the bottom we've, we've downloaded a spreadsheet. I double click on that to open it. it. Takes a couple of seconds here. Okay. Here's our file. I've got to enable editing. Safety feature there. And so we've got our, our data here in our Excel file. Okay, what does it want us to do? I'm going to close this. And it says choose the correct relative frequency histogram for the data using eight classes. All right, let's bring up our Excel. And what we know is that we need eight classes, or as most people call them, bins, equal eight. And so we need to figure out that information, and we do it. First of all, I'm going to find the min value, and then the max value, and then the range, and then we'll get the width. Okay, min is equal to min, get that function, double click on it, we need our data, close it, min value is 59 equal max, pick that function, double click on it, cover our data, close it, hit enter, that's our Max, our range is pretty straightforward, equal our max minus our min, hit enter. So that's our range. Our width is equal to the range divided by the number of bins and click enter. That gives us 3.625. We always round up, so that gives us a width of 4. So that uh, gives us some of the basic information. We need the, I'm going to call these the bin, 1, enter 2, enter 3. Once I get three of those in there, I can drag it down. And whoops, I didn't need that ninth. I only need eight bins. This is my lower limit. I'm going to call this my mid point. And then the upper limit. Okay, the lower limit starts, obviously, with our minimum value. Hit enter. That's 59. And then... The next one up would be the lower limit plus the width. So I'm going to go equal that value plus the width. Whoops. And I'm going to lock that by hitting F4. So I lock that down. So it'll always refer back to the width. And then I'll just drag that down. And I've got my... Uh, lower limits. Okay, my upper limit is equal to that next lower limit minus 1 equals 62 and then I can add my lower, I mean my first value plus the width again, lock it down, using 66, 
and drag it on down. There it goes. And that gives me my upper limits for my eight bends. Midpoint is equal to the lower limit. Whoops. I want to put a parenthesis there. Lower limit plus upper limit. Close that. Divided by two is just the average. And then I can drag that down. So I've got the midpoints of my, my bends. And um, the next thing I need to do is to get my frequencies. I'm going to call this frequency. And this is going to be relative frequency. Okay, my frequency, we want to use the Excel frequency function. And to use that, we need to select the column next to the upper limit of the bends and we just start entering equal F R E and it offers up frequency. I'll double click on that. I need to give it the data array, which is our data over here, comma, our bins array, which is the upper limits. Then I close that. Now here instead of just hitting enter because we're doing an array function, we've got to hit Control Shift Enter. And it gives us the frequencies for uh, the counts or the frequencies out of our data in each of these bins. So that's part of the question. We need to get the relative frequency. So here I want to get the sum of our frequencies. Hit Enter. We've got 30 there, so the relative frequency is equal to 1, whoops, divided by the sum. And again, I'm going to hit F4 to lock that down. And that gives me 0.333, and I can drag it down to get my uh, frequencies in each of these bins. And uh, I always like to check. I'm just going to drag this sum equation over and it should equal one which it does that just gives me a little bit of peace of mind that I didn't make a bobo there somewhere so those are our relative frequencies okay now we're going to create our histogram I'm going to just insert a chart I want my midpoints select those hold down the control whoops Let's escape that out select my midpoints hold down the control key select my relative frequencies now that I've got my data, I can go to Insert, Charts, and it's going to offer up uh, a column chart. I'm going to select that, click OK, and it's given us a uh, the makings of a histogram. Uh, it's not quite a histogram because we've got these gaps between our uh, relative frequencies. We want to get rid of those gaps, so I'm just going to select any one of the bars, right click, I'm going to format the data series, and I'm going to take this gap width down to zero, and then we want to, just to make it a little bit easier to see, click on the border, I want to make sure it's black so I can differentiate that, close it. Now we've got our basic whoops, chart here, and we can call it R-E-L-A-T-I-V-E, F-R-E-Q-U-E-N-C-I-E-S, relative frequencies. And these are our midpoints, remember, 60.5, 88.5. So let's go back and look at our options here. Um, all of them, well, these two start with 60.5, so it's got to be one of these two. These don't have the midpoint set correctly. And let's just look at the shape uh, of our histogram. And it goes up to 0.3 something, which would be there. Got four bends this way and four bends this way. That matches our chart over here. So that would be the correct selection to get our histogram. 
Next part of the problem says if you put 7850 bucks in each day, what percent of the days in the month would you expect to run out of cash? And you can do this by inspection. Uh, here's our midpoints, 76.5, 80.5. That means uh, that 78.50 is uh, somewhere in here. Um, so it would be our last three bins. These would represent the number of days that we would not have enough money if we're putting in 78.50 in each day. So let's add up the relative frequencies in those three days. And I'm going to put here for part B. And it equals sum of these last three days. And I'm going to convert that to percent. 16.7% for part B, which is the answer here. Um, this person entered 66.5, didn't round quite right. Um, so that's part B. Part C says, if you're willing to run out of the cash for 10% of the days, how much cash should you put in the ATM each day? Okay, 10%. Um, if we look at our relative frequencies here, if we add up, start looking here from the uh, far far right again, uh, the last two bins total to 10%, I think. So I'm just going to hit equal SUM. And if I add those two right there, yeah, that's 10%. And so the last two bins, if I look at our, our histogram again, um, starts at uh, the, the upper limit of this third to last bin is 82, so that's 8,200. So 8,200 would be the amount of money that uh, we've got to put in if we only want to be out of cash for 10% of the time because it's the, the last of that bin. And that matches the answer they have there. Okay, now that took a little bit of time for me to explain it to you. You can do it a lot faster. And again, what I would recommend doing would be to ha saving this work problem, making some notes so that you remember how you constructed this and uh, putting it away into your study file so that when you see a similar problem, you will know how to do this.